वेलकम टू द फर्स्ट प्रेस्टो समिट इन इंडिया everyone uh, i'm martin i'm here with dane and david you want to stand up so you can see you so that's dane on the right side david <laughs> so uh i mean thanks for uh, you joy they were uh, giving thanks to people at uh, qo for helping organize i, I want to uh, second that it's like it's really great to be here and and have a a, a you all folks and everyone in the community show up and, and help uh, set this up. So today we're going to talk about, I, I wanted to give you a, a, a history of why we did started Presto, some of the projects we went through uh, when we were at Facebook that helped shape uh, how Presto evolved and, the, and the, how, how we ended up de doing development and how we approach development in general for the Presto project. And then towards the end, I'm going to talk about uh, the Presto Foundation that we set up earlier this year. So if you look at the history of Presto, we can summarize it as uh, we started in August 2012. That was the first commit uh, on, on August 8th. So it's almost seven years, or a bit over seven years now. We went to production with the first version in January, so that was about six months. Then later in uh, that year, in, in 2003, we open sourced it, and, and then it, a bunch of people just picked it up and started using it, contributing. A lot of things happened between 2003 and now, and then earlier this year, we founded the Presto Software Foundation. We're going to talk about more, more about that later. So why did we start working on Presto? When we joined Facebook in 2012, uh, Hive was, like, it, it was a, the engine of choice at the, at the moment at Facebook. People use it for batch jobs, people use it or attempted to use it for analytics jobs. Uh, there's a, one famous quote from a, a, a data analyst at, at Facebook. They said they were happy if they could run six Hive queries in a single day. So we, we found that very, very unacceptable. So uh, we decided we had to do something about that. There was another system called Peregrine. Uh, there's a link there if you you're interested in, in learning about that, that attempted to solve the problem of interactive queries over the high data warehouse, but it had a bunch of limitations. It wasn't being maintained. It only supported a, a limited set of features. The architecture wasn't conducive to extending it to support what people needed. And so we decided to create something from, from scratch. And with a team of four engineers, we set out to uh, build this thing. So our initial mandate was to basically make analytics, interactive analytics over the Hive warehouse at Facebook uh, useful, usable, and, and, and just possible. Like uh, people were, were trying to do a lot of things that they couldn't, couldn't do at the time. We had a longer, longer term vision though. We said, well, if we're going to do something, we want to make it something for uh, the long term. We want the, the project to be useful for many, many years in the future. Uh, we wanted to build something that eventually could compete with the best commercial systems out there, like Vertica, Netisa, Teradata, and so on. And, and then we, we, we had worked on open source projects in the past, and we believe that that was uh, a fundamental thing. We need to make it open source. We need, we need something that other people in, in the world could use and could contribute to and could benefit from. So as I said, we, we went to production within six months. And uh, the initial version had support for very, some very simple features. Like you could select, you could filter rows, you could do some aggregations, very simple joins. Um, and all the, all the advanced features came after that. So in those six months, we ended up rewriting everything at least once or twice. Like you have to keep in mind, it was a team of four engineers that we, we had worked on distributed systems. We, we were... Uh, very familiar with Java, how to write efficient uh, Java applications. We, I mean, we, we have worked with databases, but from the user side, so we were familiar with the, the, the user aspects of them. We knew compilers, languages. We had done some work on, the, on those uh, areas, but we had never built a query engine. So a lot of things we learned by trial and error. And of course, we looked at all the literature that was available, but the academic literature is not a recipe. You have to kind of tie everything together and, and form a 
mental model of how everything fits together. It took a, a couple of tries to get it uh, all going. So I said there was a system called Peregrine. By July, we ended up replacing that. So everyone using, doing interactive analytics using Peregrine, uh, or, or there were some, some dashboards that were based on that, migrated to Presto by Ju July 2013. There were some things that, and, and some lessons learned in terms of how we approach developing certain things, how we approach like, picking the kinds of things that we worked on and added to Presto as a, as a project. And there are a couple of examples. So early on, we had a system for importing data from the Hive Warehouse into a native storage that we, had, we were prototyping for Presto. And uh, we, we said, well, how does this fit in, in a SQL database? And it was Quinte a bit, we say, we, you could see that that's what uh, kind of a materialized view, uh, other systems support uh, that concept. It's like, you can model it that way. You can say, you, you can think of an import as a materialization of a query that keeps up getting updated over, uh, over time and so on. So we ended up implementing it like that. We said, okay, let's implement uh, the syntax for that kind of materialized view, the, the system that would maintain them um, uh, kind of up to date and so on. And though, in a sense, it was a bit of a mistake because we, we were building something before we had all the pieces in place to support that kind of advanced functionality. So uh, we actually didn't need that. We, we just needed a way to import data into the native store. And the consequence of that is that as we try to evolve the system and, and, and add new features and, 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 and change the features that we had, there was a lot of baggage that we had to carry along. And, and like, in hindsight, a better approach would have been to just bypass uh, that and, and, and set up separate tools to import that data directly without having to model them as SQL queries. And over time, as the features in the engine became uh, more advanced, we could migrate it to, to something that the engine supported natively. The other uh, project that we had was a, a, it's a, it was a feature to be able to run approximate queries on Presto. There's, there's some research from, from a, a guy that uh, was at Berkeley at the time. He was working as an intern in, uh, at Facebook, and, and we said, oh, this looks interesting. And the idea was people would write queries, uh, and they would say, I'm okay with approximate results. Presto would be able to use sample data to read, read and process uh, much, much uh, uh, less amount of data for a given query, and then produce an approximate results with an error bound. And say, for example, using a count, you would say the count is x plus minus uh, a certain factor. It was a very interesting feature, but uh, we found that, well, th there wasn't demand, that like, people didn't, weren't interested in, in, in using that, and it required a lot of pieces to be uh, implemented, like you need to, uh, you need to have a, a way to create those samples, or people had to declare what the samples were. So it was a usability problem. P people wanted to run interactive queries, they didn't want to wait two hours for the sample to get created before they could run a query. So um, at the end of the day, People weren't using that feature. There was a lot of complexity involved in, in supporting it. It was very invasive. It touched everything, all the operators, the entire planning engine, the, 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 the grammar. And, and again, we were carrying that code uh, for a while, trying to uh, maintain it and, and, and keep it working. And so every time we implement a new feature, we had to think, how is this going to affect this other feature, even though no one was using the other feature. Uh, so at some point, we ended up uh, removing that. And again, in hindsight, we should have this is the kind of thing where uh, we, we want to look at, at a feature and, and see if it's something that's isolated, it's easier to say, okay, we can add that, and if people don't use it, that's fine. It's, it doesn't get in the way. If something that is invasive, like we, we want to be careful about uh, how, wh whether the extra complexity um, overweighs uh, the, 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 the cost of, uh, or, or sorry, the benefit of, of having the feature or not. And if it doesn't, then maybe something that needs to be delayed uh, for a moment when that's useful. On the other side, there were a bunch of uh, decisions that in hindsight were uh, very fortunate. So we decided in the beginning to uh, use ANSI SQL uh, for, for the language, even though the popular language at Facebook was Hive's query language. So it was kind of going against the grain and the culture in, in the company. 
But we said SQL seems to be, like, it will give us more opportunity in the future uh, for integrating with third party tools, for uh, reducing the barrier of entry for people that are learning how to use Presto. And, and that panned out. Like, that was a good decision. Um, like you can see today, there's integration with uh, a bunch of tools like Tableau, a bunch of uh, front end uh, systems that understand some flavor of ANSI SQL, and, and they can just talk to Presto and, 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 and run. And it also made it easier for users to pick up Presto. You, you go to I know, sites like Stack Overflow today, and you, you, you look at que people asking questions about how to do a certain thing in, in, in Presto, like how to structure a query, and you see people that are not Presto users answering those questions because it's all about the semantics of SQL language. So uh, that's uh, it is, it's, uh, something we, I think we got right there. Um, another thing is we decided early on to use HTTP as the protocol, the protocol for the clients talking to Presto, uh, workers and, and coordinator in the Presto cluster talking to each other. And that was also one of those decisions that in hindsight is like, it's a good thing we, we ended up doing that. So first of all, with HTTP, it's a lot easier to debug the systems. There's a lot of tools that people are familiar with, which is can use and, and leverage to figure out what's going on in a cluster, why things are working or not. Uh, it just, we didn't have to build additional tools for, for, for that kind of stuff. But more importantly, it made it very, very easy to, for people to integrate and, and extend uh, Presto for their uh, data center uh, deployments. Uh, for example, it's easier to write a gateway or a proxy or integrate with load balancers because everyone understands HTTP. And then the, the other big aspect of, of, of Presto that we, I think we got right was to make it extensible via plugins. This, like, if, if, we were, if we had decided to build Presto as something that was very specific for Facebook that no one else other than Facebook was gonna use, then this is probably overkill. But we, we said, um, we, we decided we wanna make it open source. There were some constraints around that. We wanted to integrate with internal systems at Facebook, but also let other people um, integrate or, or be able to use it against open source hype. Presto, uh, Facebook had a fork of Hive at the time, so there was a, uh, a, a constraint there. We can support both at the same time without uh, 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 some, some kind of, some, some way of uh, isolating how, how the, the different integrations work. The nice thing was that as we developed the first versions of, of, of Presto, we, we realized there was a clean separation between the query engine and the, the, how the storage layer needed to operate. And there was a, a clean API that we, we could define. So that became the boundary of, uh, for, the, for the connector plugins. And, and that it was just a natural consequence of that. Uh, and, and it turned out to be a, a really good decision. After that, there were a bunch of projects that came out, it came, came up inside Facebook to integrate Presto with other systems. And that was made a lot easier by just having this ability to extend it via plugins. One of the big projects that we worked on uh, soon after was, there was a team in the ads uh, organization. They, they had a user-facing product for an ad analytics, and they, they need to replace the, the, the query backend. They, they had some solution there, and they, they need to be able to scale it. Um, they had some issues with the specific technologies that were running at the time. And basically, the system worked like this. So, um, they had uh, use end users that would go to a, a UI and run a query that, that would be, or interact through a, a web UI, and that would run a query against a, a query backend. And the data in that backend was being generated by collecting events from uh, ad exposures and so on. They were aggregated over time and then uh, recorded in that backend store. And they, we need to replace that, that query system. So we said, okay, uh, Presto seems like a good fit, but there were a couple of things that weren't, uh, Presto wasn't able to do at the time. So first of all, because the aggregates were being done as a, it's like it was accumulating, say, counts or sums or some kind of uh, uh, parcel aggregations, they were being bucketed by time, dumped into this store, and then as more uh, data came in, they would replace the, the existing bu uh, bucket data, say, for a given hour, we, uh, and to support that, we need some kind of insert update uh, semantics that Presto didn't, didn't have at the time. Like, it, the, the Hive 
uh, the connector for querying over Hive and the interaction with Hive only supported reading tables. Uh, so that was a challenge. Uh, the other challenge was they were, uh, they were migrating from an existing system, so their data model was already laid out, and it was extremely normalized. They had um, uh, tables that linked against other tables, against other tables, and to support, to run one query, we need to support, be able to support 10 or 15 way joins, which is something that Presto could do, but um, given that the quer these queries need to run at interactive speeds, trying to load all that data up front, like say to build all the hash tables that are needed for a join, was a waste of time, waste of latency, and it wasn't quite a good fit. So we ended up having to add a couple of things. And, and of course, this need to run at interactive, interactive latencies, uh, web, web speeds. So the first thing we thought was, okay, what storage system can, can we use for this? We, we only supported Hive at the time via connector. And Hive HDFS wasn't a good fit for the reasons that I mentioned before. Uh, so we started looking at HBase. And it seemed like a good choice. It's like a, a, the promise of HBase is it's a distributed system. You, only think, you have only to think in terms of adding rows, reading rows. Um, the system would, in theory, scale, uh, scale up as needed. Uh, it would rebalance the, the data if, if you had more machines and so on. But it was, for, from the Presto team's point of view, it was a black box that we didn't have to worry about. But then as we went through the, the implementation, we rea realized that in order to get the performance we needed, the control we needed, we need to break those abstractions that uh, HBase offered. Uh, so we need to be able to go directly to the HBase uh, uh, table servers. Uh, we need to figure out how to map uh, key value, uh, key, uh, keys and values, which is the abstraction that HBase provides, into tables and columns and, uh, and rows in, in Presto. So there was some impedance mismatch there. But the big thing is that we can get consistent performance out of HBase. So uh, on average, it was good, but some queries would end up maybe taking 30 seconds when they should have taken less than a second. So we started looking at MySQL uh, as, a, um, as an alternative, and Facebook had a pretty good installation or support for, for uh, MySQL at scale. There, there, were good, there was good tooling and entire team they could support that. And it was a more natural fit because we don't have to reason about how to map rows and, and keys and values. MySQL just has columns and rows, so it was a good fit there. So, we, and we prototyped it, we, we tried it out, and we got better performance, better, uh, less vari variable performance, and we didn't have all the issues that we had with HBase in terms of abstraction breaking. So we ended up going with that. And the architecture looked something like this. So Presto would be talking to a, a cluster of shards of MySQL. It's a, it was a bunch of tooling to manage that uh, shard, uh, shard of MySQL installation. And one of the things, Remember, the, the, when I mentioned there were some mistakes we, within the, in the beginning, one of the decisions we, we made was, well, we need to get data into that set of MySQL instances. So we could have gone down the path of adding support for insert and update and a bunch of other complexity to Presto. We said, well, we are trying to solve a very big problem here. It's a new use case. It's a very critical use case for the company. We don't want to have to solve two problems. So let's figure out what's the minimum thing we can do. We, built out the uh, ability to query MySQL to organize the data, and then we set up a separate system that was parallel to Presto to load the data into that set of MySQL instances. And eventually, we ended up migrating that functionality into Presto as Presto gained the ability to do inserts and, and so on. But it was kind of a, a good choice we had there, we made there. So along the way, or during this project, Presto uh, learned how to do index joins so that we didn't have to load and build the hash tables in memory for every table that's going to be joined in. Uh, so that helped increase, uh, decrease the latency and be able to run 15-way joins in, 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 in a, a, a few hundred milliseconds, up to a few seconds. Uh, we, are, we added the ability to run, to store data in multiple ways, in multiple organizations, physical organizations, and the engine could reason about those. Uh, and take advantage of the physical organization that be best fit a specific shape of query. For example, if you're doing a query that 
was primarily accessing data by advertiser, it could access a organization that was partitioned by advertisers, so it could prune the data sets. Uh, the other thing we, we did, and this is something that like Presto was being used interactively for the warehouse, but the minimum latencies weren't like, they were in a few seconds range kind of. And in order to support the, the user, the web interactive speeds that we needed, we need to uh, remove all the remaining latency these need problems, and some of those came from uh, some parts in the code base that would um, do a check, and then uh, if the check wasn't, like for example, check if there was more data. If there wasn't any more data available, they would sleep, and then wake up after a while, and then check again. Oh, and that introduces artificial latency, and we had to uh, change that to be event-based. So uh, the parts that need to wait for data to be available would register for an event, and when the, the the data was available, they would get notified and different parts of the query could continue working. Um, so with that, we were able to reduce the latency of the, uh, of the shortest query to the, in the order of uh, know, 50, 70 milliseconds. And then as part of this, the other thing that came out was uh, what we call the JDBC-based connectors. This is a kind of a toolkit inside the Presto code base that allows us to implement connectors for JDBC databases very quickly. And we had one for MySQL, but then uh, uh, very quickly we were able to add Postgres, Redshift, uh, Phoenix, and, and a couple other uh, integrations with systems that expose JDBC uh, connectivity. So another big project we tackled after, uh, after the, the one I just talked was we need to replace the analytics backend for the A-B testing framework at Facebook. This is a, it was a massive system. Every, every product engineer, anyone working on product was relying on this system to uh, see how, like they were running out of feature and they need to see how the feature affected the metrics that company cared about. It was a big system for doing that. And it had a bunch of limitations, like either it wasn't able to deliver result or, or, or uh, take into account data um, quickly, like w when you were doing analysis, you could only see the results of experiments that ran five days ago, uh, which is not, it wasn't acceptable for people doing, um, uh, rolling out features and when they wanted to see uh, quickly what the effect of those was, were. Or you couldn't do, uh, provide accurate results and, 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 and consistent results. Like it, it was using a system that, that, that wasn't designed to produce um, complete results, so sometimes uh, the results were um, kind of a bit off and unvariable. So some of the requirements were we need to be able to run at uh, also interactive speeds because it was, pe it was people uh, sitting in front of a web UI internally. This wasn't user facing, it was internal to, to Facebook. But they were sitting in front of a UI and they wanted quick responses. On the other hand, we had a lot of data we had to process. So we couldn't do we couldn't use the, the sharded MySQL approach because it was way too expensive to store that data, to query it. Um, we couldn't use Hive because we couldn't get the performance and the, and the latencies we needed. So we ended up building a new, uh, a new connector, a new storage engine specific to Presto. We implemented it as a connector in the Presto code base. Uh, and that connector allows uh, it had a couple of benefits. So first of all, it was designed or co-designed co with Presto and, and the APIs that we needed to support and the way we need data to be organized and the features that we needed to make the, Presto, the quest, uh, queries in Presto faster could be evolved at the same time. So uh, we had that advantage of being able to move quickly there. And then solved some of the problems of how to do data loads atomically. Uh, it could organize data in different ways that Presto could take advantage of. And then along the way, Presto also, we added support for inserting and deleting data because we need to manage the data in that uh, native storage. And uh, we improved the, the query engine to be able to do things like collocated joins. So we avoided shuffling massive amounts of data over the network. All right, so by this point, we, so Presto was handling pretty much 100% of all the interactive workloads for the Hive warehouse. It was handling a couple of very important uh, use cases, the A-B testing framework and the ad analytics uh, application. And 
there were some people that had started using Presto for some of the batch workloads. Like this is kind of uh, unofficially, they had integrated with the scheduling system so they could submit queries to Presto. And it became clear that it was, that was a, it seemed to be like a good thing. It's like queries were faster, more efficient. So we basically set up a project to make that first class uh, uh, system and, and support. So the idea was to take all the high workload and eventually migrate it to, to Presto. And this through a combination of migrating existing workloads and getting everyone to start building new workloads on, on Presto. So of course we face a bunch of challenges along the way. Uh, this was a kind of a delicate dance between uh, adding features, rolling them out, convincing people to move away from Hive and using Presto, which was if we didn't have the features, sometimes they couldn't, so we had that kind of race. It was also an issue with uh, managing, we, we, there was never enough capacity. Like the, the growth rate was super large, like in one and a half years, we, the usage, usage of Presto for batch workloads grew about 20 uh, 20x. So uh, we went from a couple hundred machines to thousands of machines. Um, so we're running into scalability limits. The diversity of the workloads were, were causing Presto to run into obscure bugs, so we had to track those down. Um, people were used to doing certain things in Hive that Presto wasn't designed to do. Like Presto uh, is a multi-talent system, so we, can't, we couldn't just allow anyone to write code that would run inside a Presto instance because it could affect reliability. We had to make the system, maintain the system reliability as we roll out new features. Uh, as we continue to grow the, the deployment. So it's all these challenges that, that, that uh, kind of uh, all interact with each other. And we had to do a lot of things outside of, of Presto for, to deal with that, like the ability to run multiple clusters, balance workloads ac across multiple clusters, tools for managing clusters, exposing, uh, exposing to users uh, the state of the cluster so they could see that when there's a problem going on, they could see or, or troubleshoot things on their own and figure out what's going on. Um, and there are some things that we added inside Presto. Uh, things like resource groups, we improved I don't know, the execution engine inside the workers to avoid some starvation issues. Uh, we added um, the ability to control session properties on the, from the pres uh, Presto side so that we could selectively roll out new features and enable it for specific uh, batch workloads so we could increment, uh, like, kind of do gradual deployments so of, of new features. We would do a deployment and then uh, turn the, the features on uh, gradually, so, so we could observe the effect and make sure that we didn't deploy something that would suddenly take down the entire uh, system. Um, and there were some other user-facing features like Lambda expressions that allowed people to model a lot of the things they were trying to do with high UDFs uh, using, using those expressions. Um, and then grouped execution is a, is a technique that allows a, allowed us to run large memory queries in a way that didn't need the, like for certain kinds of queries, it didn't need to, the person didn't need to load all the day in memory before it can, it can uh, continue processing so it could constrain the amount of memory that those queries needed and avoid running into, into memory lanes for the cluster. Uh, I'm not gonna go into much more detail about this. This is probably a topic for an entire other talk, but I just wanted to give you an idea of some of the challenges and some of the things that, that we did uh, to address them. So by the end of 2018, uh, if you looked at workloads by amount of data process, more than 50% of all the workloads, the batch workloads were running on Presto. 85% um, or more of all the new workloads being, were being written against Presto. And, and the remaining ones were a mix between Hive and, and Spark that was being, were being used at, at Facebook. And, and by then, Presto for batch workloads was the biggest deployment at, at Facebook. So again, it's like in a, in, in a compressed period, like two years or so, we kind of grew that use case to be the biggest one uh, for Presto. So anyway, and so then also end of last year, Dane, David, and I left Facebook and uh, we looked at the project, we decided, I mean, if we go back to our original vision, we want the project to be 
there for the long term. Like we, we, we thought about Postgres as, a, as an inspiration in terms of what an open source project looks like. It's like we wanted something that could live for many, many decades, have a healthy community, <coughs> and and we realized, like after we left, and, and shortly after we left, other engineers that were involved in the project left. At that point, the majority of the of the contributors to the project and the people kind of driving the long-term vision and technical direction of the project were no longer at Facebook. So it seemed natural to and a, and a, a natural point for uh, Presto to become an independent project, something that that is independent of any specific company. So what we did is. We, we talked to a bunch of companies and, and, and tried to gauge uh, like whether this, uh, what people thought about uh, what, we're, what we're doing at the time, and, and we decided uh, setting up a foundation was the, the, the way to, to, to get to, to what we wanted to do. So we set up the Presto Software Foundation at the beginning of the year with the goal of uh, well, first of all, maintaining and keeping doing the things that we had done for the past six years that made Presto successful. Uh, and then, and also to ensure that the project remained, uh, had a healthy community and remained open and, and collaborative, and most of, of all, independent for, for the long term. So as part of this process, we ended up setting up a bunch of new infrastructure. Uh, we have a new uh, GitHub repository, a new website, um, we have a new Twitter account, so uh, you can follow that too. Recently, a couple months ago, we set up a weblog. It's a community weblog. Um, we already have a bunch of very, very good content from a number of people in the community. And of course, I would encourage anyone that wants to contribute to that weblog to do it. Um, and uh, it, just talk to me after that, uh, afterwards if you're interested. I, I, I can give you pointers on how to do it. And most importantly, we set up a new Slack uh, channel. And uh, this is, effectively, Slack is where everything happens on a day-to-day -day basis for the project. So if you're, if you're interested in getting involved in the project, that's the place to be. So sign up. Uh, we have um, basically everything from people seeking help, uh, people talking about design, new features, uh, helping other people, like everything happens there. And uh, if you just need help, you, you, you ask a question there. And we have a pretty global community, so within a few minutes, you're probably going to get an answer. There's always someone available there. All right, since, so one of the things that's hard to quantify is how the project has evolved over the last few months since we set up the foundation. Um, I mean, the, you look at the numbers, and yeah, there's a lot of activity, lots of people involved, lots of commits. Uh, but it, it feels like there's a lot more momentum. Like since since the, we set up the foundation, it, it, we saw a, a number of people that weren't previously involved with the project get engaged with the project. That people had uh, maybe kind of they were sitting on the sidelines, like uh, kind of lurking and uh, maybe using Presto but not engaging with the rest of the community. Now everyone started jumping in and helping other people. So it has been really really great. Um, so this is a this is a bit old. It's from a couple of months, but it shows the number of people that have, con have contributed anything to Presto since we set up the the foundation. It's more than 50 people uh, contribute code, and a bunch of other people contribute to things that are not code, like filing issues, helping other people, uh, writing blog posts. Every every one of those activities counts as uh, participating and contributing. So that's. Um, that's also very valuable. Uh, and all those people come from many, many companies. This is, uh, as, as best as we can tell, like uh, all the companies that are involved in, in the project as contributors, not just users. There's many, many more companies using Presto than this. So let's briefly talk about uh, roadmap. A couple of things where, where that are being worked on right now and how we think about roadmap. So, there's a huge laundry list of, like, remember, we, we're talking about Presto as a long-term project. There's lots of things we want to do eventually. We want Presto to evolve in different ways. Of course, we can tackle everything um, uh, in, in the short term. Uh, when we talk about roadmap, we're really talking about the things that people are working on or are interested in working on or contributing to in the, in, in the near future. This, Remember, Presto is a community-based project. 
uh, it's, it's uh, as good as volunteers uh, make it. Uh, we have people that are volunteering their time and, and resources to make Presto better, so uh, the roadmap is driven by what people are working on effectively or what they are uh, expressing interest in, in working on. Uh, so if you want to see what's being worked on, like kind of a more prominent project being worked on right now, you can follow that link. I'm going to summarize some of them. This is not an exhaustive list. Uh, so there's there's a project to implement a connector for Iceberg. There's people from Netflix, from LinkedIn. Uh, Dave is helping them. They are, uh, it's basically integrating Presto with uh, Ice, uh, Iceberg, which is a project from Netflix. It's a storage engine from Netflix. Uh, it's now an Apache project too. And there's, we have an initial version ready. There's some loose ends that need to be implemented. Uh, like if you are interested in helping with that, there's a lot of opportunity to get involved with the project. So uh, just go go look at the issue, and, 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 and if there's anything interesting, you can can jump on and, and help with that. Uh, we have another big project to make Presto to improve the way Presto interacts with connectors to allow uh, more complex operations to be pushed down into connectors. This is to help integration with uh, more sophisticated systems like Druid and Pinot and databases that can, can do more than just produce a set of rows. They can, they can do joins, aggregations, etc. Uh, so it has been an ongoing project. It's, it, there are many, many parts to it. Uh, again, it's one of those things, if, if you have a, a use case for this, we'd like to hear about it. If you want to help with the project, that's also a good uh, a good place to, to jump in and contribute. Uh, so Joy Deep mentioned dynamic filtering. That's another project that's ongoing. So dynamic filtering is a feature in the engine that it's an optimization that allows Presto to run queries more efficiently uh, and, and basically reduce latency when uh, it can discover certain properties of the data at runtime that it can use to, uh, to optimize the execution uh, that it couldn't do otherwise during planning. So there's a few people from uh, Cuba working on that. People from a, a, a company in Israel are also helping with that. People from Starburst, which is a company involved in Presto. So again, effort across the community. Uh, so we expect this to be getting into the project pretty soon. And then finally, another project. Uh, this, is, this is basically extending the way Presto so just like Presto today can resolve tables dynamically. So uh, a connector can, can when, when you're running a query, the, the engine says, do you know about this table? And the connector says, oh, I'm going to look in the high meta store. And yeah, the table's there. This is the shape of the table. So we're trying to do the same thing for functions. The idea is connectors can resolve functions dynamically. They can provide implementation of functions dynamically. And this opens the door for uh, a number of things that we can do. I mean, the most important one is people can dynamically de uh, uh, define and, and, and register functions into the system, um, like either, either through a, a, like a custom language or, or there's a SQL dialect to define uh, kind of procedures or or functions, and we're planning to, to uh, implement that. And it opens up the door to other things in the future, like uh, being able to implement remote functions and, and so on. So anyway, there's a lot more going on. Uh, again, I encourage you to follow that link uh, with, for the roadmap if you're interested in seeing what's going on. Join the Slack channels uh, if you want to find out more by asking people. If you want to jo join Slack, that's the link. Uh, there's a sign-up link if you follow that. Uh, there's a troubleshooting channel that everyone that signs in, signs up, will get automatically registered with. That's where you go and ask questions. Uh, if you have problems, people will are available almost all the time there to, to help. And if you want to participate in the project, you don't need to know how to write code. You don't need to know how to write Java or understand Presto. Filing issues. Helping uh, other people; those are all good ways to to get involved. Um, talking about your use cases, your requirements—that that's the kind of thing that helps uh, figure out what's important for people, what what problems we need to solve as a community, and so on. And then, of course, coordinate with other people that might be interested in, in helping out. 
And, and finally, if you want to write blog posts, that's a, another good way to participate. If, you have, if you're using Presto, talking about how you use it, talking about the challenges, the, how you solve those challenges, that's useful. If you're contributing to Presto uh, in, in the form of code, talking about how those, co those uh, changes work, how, how, like anything that, that uh, any technical write-up of what you're doing is, is useful and, and, and interesting. All right, and with that, I'll open it up for questions. Until tomorrow night. We have all day tomorrow available, so if people are interested in, in setting up some time to meet kind of, kind of in smaller groups, uh, let us know. We're, 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 gonna, we're trying to figure out how to set it up, but uh, uh, once we, we find out who and how many people want to do something like that, uh, we're organize a, we'll organize a schedule for that. Right, so yeah, on that one, uh, you can reach out to Martin or to me or to Shubham and we will schedule um, um, some time uh, either in Cubol office and we'll, we'll probably, uh, you know, give you dedicated slots for a more in-depth interactive session with the, with the founders. But, but we want to close on that before, uh, before lunch today so, so that we know how many people are going to show up and we do the scheduling up, uh, you know, appropriately. So do reach out to us uh, either in the breaks or during lunch, but 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 hopefully not late, later than that. Questions for this talk? Uh, so my name is Ashok. Uh, we use Presto extensively in EMR uh, and through the Athena. My question to you is: uh, Is uh, the code behind the Athena still uh, your foundation pushes the code or? Uh, how uh, are AWS themselves uh, enhancing that? So you said Athena, right? Right, Athena. Yeah, so Athena was built based on, I think it was version 0172, which is uh, a few or so, and they end up patching a few things. I think uh, at this point, they, I mean, they, they are in the process of upgrading to a more recent version, but uh, and when, when the foundation was set up, they were already in that process, so they were, uh, were going to upgrade to a version before the, that kind of we branched off. And I, I, I'm not sure what they are planning to do after that, but uh, like, it will depend on, on, on like, what the community is asking for, the set of features that people are asking for. So if there are things that you care about, uh, like you should talk to them and, 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 and maybe you can push them to support some of the newer versions. The other thing that we've heard is that um, EMR is planning to add support for, for the latest version of Presto, like the, the Presto SQL version. Uh, I, 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 at the same time, they support the, the, the previous versions from, yeah. from Facebook. So you can, you can choose there what you want to run. Thank you. Uh, just one request, uh, quickly introduce yourself, uh, name and the company you work for. Me? Yeah. My name is Ashok. Uh, I work for uh, OneSpan as a consultant. Right. Thank you. Yeah, this is a request to all the people who are asking <coughs> questions so that you know, we know where the context is. Yeah. Uh, hi, this is Kailash. Uh, I work in Ericsson. So I just wanted to understand uh, your approach towards uh, data security. Uh, in terms of Presto. So will it be covered later, or you, if you want to give a brief overview of that part, that will be great, yeah. Thank you. So Presto supports, well, there are multiple aspects to that. There's uh, authentication, authorization, uh, uh, like on the wire protection and all that. Um, so Presto supports, from the authentication point of view, support, supports different mechanisms. You can do uh, like certificate-based, Kerberos, password-based authentication. Presto implements a standard SQL model, so you can protect tables uh, uh, and limit access to tables to specific users. You can go, go down to like, specific columns. I can say this user can only see certain columns from, from a given table. Uh, it, also, it kind of requires some interaction with the connector, so it's up to the connector to implement some uh, I mean, the, 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 the permission control for, so Presto will ask for 
can this user check for this, uh, can access this table, can write into this table, but it's up to the connector to decide, yes, it's allowed or not. And there's integration with, uh, with Ranger. Uh, there's a, a plugin for Ranger that some people have deployed. Um, I think Hive, David, uh, can you maybe answer? Hive, Hive has support for, the, the master has support for security, right? So, yeah, so, so Presto can integrate with the standard SQL security from Hive. Um, in terms of, of encryption on the wire, so connections from the client to, to, the, to the cluster are over HTTPS. Uh, there, there's a, uh, Presto supports authentication against HDFS and administrator using, uh, using Kerberos. So it depends on exactly what you're looking for. There's a bunch of different answers to, uh, to, the, to the question. So. If you have maybe a specific, more specific question, we can go into that. But. Um, maybe I can take it offline on that part. Okay. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah hi, uh, my name is Babu, and I work for Huawei. Just wanted to know in your roadmap how the CBO enhancement is, is there or not, that's all. Yeah, Presto, so Presto has had a cost-based optimizer for, for a while now. Uh, I mean, it's, it's limited to uh, joint reordering and joint, joint type selection, and over time we'll keep improving that. But right now, uh, it's available. It does require that connectors be able to provide stats about your tables. They have to be able to provide row counts, sizes, uh, a number of unique values for, that, for the engine to be able to make decisions. So if you're using Hive, uh, Hive already supports stats. You just need to enable them. Uh, there's a, a, a command in Presto to force it to compute the stats if you don't have something that would compute them for you. Uh, you can tell Presto to record those stats as, as you insert data through Presto. Once those stats are available, if you turn on the, the optimizer, it will just take advantage of them. Thank you. Hey, hi. Uh, so I'm Shubham. I'm from G. So I wanted to ask that you had a, in your roadmap related to dynamic filtering when the query is running at that time, we need to make decisions, like query needs to make decisions to run it efficiently. So is there any adaptive stats gathering plan and then making decision also in your pipe, like in development? Like when it comes to Oracle CBO, it does has like whenever the same query will run again, it will be run more efficiently because it will gather the stats for the next time if it doesn't have any. So. Yeah, right now there's no, Presto doesn't have a way to take advantage of past execution to improve the execution of, of uh, future queries. Um, but the, I mean, the engine is very adaptive in many ways. Like uh, if, you, if you run, for example, if you run bigger clusters, you can take advantage of more machines to uh, increase parallelism. Um, there are different scheduling strategies that, that can help with kind of different shapes of queries. Um, I mean, well, of course, uh, dynamic filtering helps 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 at runtime to figure out that you don't need to scan even scan certain data sets after discovering uh, the shape of some data or the, the say the, the all the values in some of the data sets that you're joining in. Um, I mean, there's of course there's a bunch of opportunities to improve and add things. I guess it depends exactly on. Uh, use cases like th this is the kind of thing that if there's a specific use case that we can you can use to anchor what uh, what the improvement needs to be then it's easier to have a, a discussion whether it's viable in the short term whether it requires other infrastructure in place and so on We had a really big cluster on Raptor. So what's the, what the roadmap or support on the Raptor? And uh, off late, it's uh, renamed to uh, legacy Raptor. So is there any, anything more is going on or uh, anything? David, you want to take that one? Yeah, so uh, Raptor is open source. Um, it's always been part of the code base. Uh, we never uh, documented it. Uh, so. Before I left Facebook, I'd been working for quite a long time on a rewrite of it um, to be fully transactional, have better support for shared metadata and other features. And so we knew that that was coming along, so that's why we never put any effort into promoting the, the current version that's there. Um, 
and then I left Facebook, and then I've been focused on Iceberg lately. Uh, but we would like to uh, check in and finish up the, the rewrite of Raptor and then fully document it as uh, something that people um, can use and rely on. So if you're interested in that, um, join the Slack channel and uh, talk to me, because uh, we, we'd love to hear about like how, uh, what people are interested in. I mean, uh, what's your advice if somebody wants to become a foundation committer or rest of SQL committer? How would, uh, how should they go about uh, helping? I mean, the important thing is, is to sh show up and participate. Um, I, when, when we talk about a, a committer to the project, a committer is, is a job, really. It's, it's, uh, I mean, anyone can contribute code, can help review code, can, can propose design changes, can participate in design. Uh, being a committer is, is a job. It's, it's, it requires, like, you need to show up and, and be uh, involved in the community, help, help uh, other community members, uh, help drive, make sure that there's uh, uh, kind of consensus and agreement on, on where we want to go, like how, how projects continue to evolve, make sure that things happen, really. Um, so, but the important thing is to participate. So just join Slack channel, start getting involved in discussions, start getting involved in, in design discussions, in, in uh, review, uh, so looking at other people's code, looking at, uh, at kind of learning how development takes place in the project uh, is important. Um, and you can do that by getting involved in, in code reviews, getting your code reviewed, helping other people review their code and so on. I mean, there's no, single way, I, I would say the first thing is be involved. That's the first step. Yeah. Oh, and uh, if you go to the website, there's a, there's a link in the, I think it's the developers uh, section. We, we talk about some of that, so just read over that. It's, it's yeah. Hi, uh, this is Ashish from Kewal, so I have a query. Uh, so, you know, uh, Presto is, uh, Presto is used for federated query a lot, right? So, which means yeah. one of the aspect of that is to fetch data from high, it could be RDBMS, it could be, you know, SQL databases. So, one challenge which we, you know, face, I think, very often to have that single thread connection with the, you know, RDBMS databases. So, the, do we have any plan to prioritize that in our, you know, roadmap list? But this is something which I'm, you know, getting from different users, I think, almost every day. So, so the challenge with uh, talking to databases uh, via JDBC is that JDBC doesn't define a parallel API. So there's no standard way to say, I'm going to talk to Oracle and, and somehow divide the execution of my query into a bunch of parallel queries that, that can uh, generate data and feed data in parallel to the engine. So there are a number of ideas on how we can tackle that, but there's no general purpose solution. So uh, it's one of the things, like, if, if you guys want to get involved in that, that would be great because it, we've been yeah. talking about that forever. So. Yeah, so the way Scoop works, right? So the, if we can adopt the you know same uh, you know, uh, you know, the way of you know handling the solution, right? So where we can get the metadata first, right, to divide this workload across right. different workers, and then we can solve that problem. Yeah, and there are some things you can do. Like if you know yeah. what the primary keys are, maybe and, and that things are partitioned by that, then maybe you can partition that way. Sometimes that's not available. So uh, there are there are a few things we can do. In the like maybe in the short term, there's other things that we we might need to have. Um, um, I know some some kind of way for people to express how their data is organized, so that Presto can take advantage of that. So again, we I don't think we have a concrete answer, but it's one of those, it's one of those things we've been talking about for a while. So yeah, I think there's an issue file for that, so uh, you can follow up there, and we can have more discussions about that. Thanks, Martin, again for the talk. Uh, uh, big round of applause for our people. <laughs>